Hi, good afternoon. Happy Easter. I hope you had a good break, no? And uh, we're back to school. Sorry, no, uh, if, if some of you started the basketball game, sorry <laughs> to disrupt your plans. <laughs> Ako din, eh, bitin, eh. Um, I just checked the game. No? At least lamang tayo by nine. So that's Let me just prepare my deck. Mm -hmm. Share screen. Okay. Ah, wait, let me do presentation mode. It's been a while then for me since I taught, so bear with me. Okay. Share screen. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so okay, we'll start in a minute or two. For those who are just joining, <laughs> afternoon. All right. So, okay, we can uh, start this to go on. Um, for those of you who came in late, no? uh, uh, early, pala, sorry. All right, so announcements again. Um, so please finish module four. We're gonna finish module four today. Um, a summary of module four, no? Um, but if you're not done on Canvas yet, please finish that by the end of the month. No? Um, and uh, that will include your homework, no? but that's June, May 7. Yet. <clears throat> So cover module five, uh, the last two weeks of the, the course no? of, of, of the semester. So just a few announcements also, no? um, and this is being recorded. No? So uh, please let your group mates know no? for your group mates for uh, homework two. Um, the main, as, as we discussed last time, no? and this was an oversight on my Yeah, this was an oversight on my part. No? I did a poll, no? if, if, if some of you, most of you will remember, I, we did a poll now whether we would, because um, I wanted to convert either next week or the or May 3 no? as, uh, as an optional, uh, no synchronous class, no? but optional group consultations so for homework too. No? Uh, most of you, I think 10, uh, 10 out of 11 said, Sir, May 3 na lang. Even though it's May 7, kumbaga, we're, we're probably done with the first draft or at least an outline, etc. The problem is, I did not anticipate that Idil Fitir might fall on May 3. The problem kasi with the Muslim holidays, no? Idil Fitir, Idil Adha, no? it depends on the moon sighting. No? So they will only declare when exactly the, the day will be, <laughs> whether it's May 2, Monday, or May 3. No? So well, one first first of all, no. Um, I had a sign up seat sheet. No one signed up yet for the other class. We want to sign up now, but for this class, um, I'm posting it as well in the PowerPoint. So when I post it tomorrow or tonight, you can just click on the link, or you can refer to the announcements. No? So there's a sign up sheet. But beyond that, no. Point number two is in case a Delphitier falls on May three, no. I I also. Um, sent out a survey that's also um, in the form of an announcement. No? So please do that. Because no? the problem is if it's May, if it didn't fit here, falls 
on May 3, then we don't have class. And I don't think I can impose uh, an optional consultation for you guys uh, for that. So please answer the survey um, uh, as much as you can, no? uh, if you can, no? within the week, compare then. Okay, yun lang. So the, in, in case you missed the announcements for both no, the sign-up sheet and then the, the survey, no, just go browse through the announcements in class and then you'll see them. But uh, once I post the deck, because I usually post the recording in the deck uh, the following day, by the following day, uh, if I have time, I usually post it the night, during the night no, of the class. No, so. But please, ano na lang, no? please browse through the announcements. You'll see them. No? So please answer them as, as well. Um, just in case some of you missed, and I think many missed, not many, no, but some of you missed no, the, uh, the class last week. No? Again, uh, useful resources for homework two will be the Arangkada Philippines. I also posted, um, uh, I'm also posting here the, the URL, the website, no? Uh, there's a search function, so you can search uh, BOT law, you can search create, train, and, and all the other things that I assigned for homework number two. And again, as I mentioned last time, no, if you are interested in getting a daily curated uh, set of uh, relevant major business and economic news, no, you can sign up. It's free. No? They, they give you a daily digest of uh, discover through international and local uh, um, news, no? news outfits. No? So they, they, they send that. No? So you can just sign up. Um, there's a subscribe uh, section there. Enter email address and you'll get a daily um, service, news clip service. Uh, yeah, any questions? On anything I discussed, any comments on on anything? I will assume there's none. All right. So yeah. So we'll cover now. I hope some of you, um, and I think some of you have already answered the discussion board for this part. So that means some of you have already finished module four, which is good. And this is the last, and this is a short piece, no. But uh, we'll spend some time. I will assign a uh, a short article for you guys no, to read, no, and we'll discuss that um, after you you're done. No. So, the role of private sector in development, and this is really important, no, because uh, the reason why I always include this in my classes, in my Soxi thirteen classes, because the 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 old school, the the traditional mentality was development helping solve poverty and other well-being challenges. Ah, that's the role of government or NGOs. No? But I would again make the argument and we'll, we'll, we'll really uh, dive deeper into this. No? I would make an argument that no, it's really um, the private sector has to have a role. And it actually in many cases, no, it is more capable because it has more resources, not just money but also human, technical, expertise, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the reason why I give out this course. And hopefully to inspire some of you, you know, eventually if you're going uh, to the corporate world, you know, that yes, you can actually, it's not selfish to go into business, you know, but um, you can actually try to, to, to solve development challenges using um, business approaches, you know, using for-profit approaches. You know. So we'll cover, we'll do an intro article um, I'll ask you guys to read that. We'll, this, we'll cover shared value, which is foundational. No? Even for us, no, um, when we have at, at USAID, no, um, we have a private sector engagement course. No? The first thing that we cover is Michael Porter's shared value concept. So even for us, for professionals, no, um, this may be new to some of us, um, to my colleagues. No? We'll also examine more examples and then I'll talk about the final discussion board no, uh, in, in module four. No, um, and just to differentiate between CSR and shared value. No, because we want to move away from the traditional philanthropic CSR or corporate social responsibility, but really more sustainable um, approaches. So we will cover that.
All right. So I'll give you seven, let's say, or maybe 10 minutes. We'll see no, how you're doing no, um, to read this piece by one of my favorite opinion writers, as you probably observed by now, is Toti uh, Chikiamko. No? Uh, Mr. Chikiamko, Dr. Chikiamko. No? So let me paste. Let me. Oh, wait. How do I do this? Wait, lang ha, let me copy this in the chat box. So I'll give you around seven minutes no, to read that. Please read that. We'll discuss that after. No. I wanted to get your key takeaways no, on that. So please um, read that. Mga seven minutes, but we'll see. No. I'll check with you guys after seven minutes if you're done. Eight minutes na lang, sige. We'll resume at 5.18, more or less. In another. Let's play by ear. Just in case some came in late, here's the link again to the article. Please read that. We'll resume before 5.20.
Okay, uh, are you guys done, sort of? Okay, let's go back to this. All right, you guys need more time? You're okay now. Sige. Anyway, I mean, um, you don't have to finish it to get the gist of the article. So just wanted to, and this is a good introduction to, to what we've been learning um, um, on Canvas. Uh, it's a good intro. Uh, oh, sige. Uh, what are your key takeaways, guys, from the article? You can disagree as well. No, um, I had the student uh, last semester, no, medyo, um, medyo anti-capitalist, so medyo he disagreed. So you can disagree if you feel strongly against it as well. So feel free, go ahead. All right, so you can chat, you can type on the chat or you can verbalize your answer. Capitalism, someone texted me, no? Uh, if implemented properly and if done with a clear set of rules can actually be very helpful in the development of a country. I think that most people look at capitalism as such a negative thing, but that's only because a great number of people that are in power abuse it. All right, thank you for that, Arabella. Any other thoughts? Joaquin, go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you. So I'll try to avoid going on the rant, but um, my main takeaway is I disagree with it because I think this notion where crony capitalism is somehow an inferior and separate form of capitalism from what quote unquote real capitalism is, is not correct. And I think uh, the possibility of corruption and abuses is just as much a part of capitalism as it is to the government. And it isn't necessarily more capitalism that is needed for development, but more transparent and uh, better interactions between the state and the private sector. Yeah. So you're not necessarily uh, disagreeing with the article. You're just, I guess, no. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. No? I think you'd want the transparency, more emphasis on the transparent nature of transactions and involvement. And you're right. No? Whenever there's there's wealth, no, that can be abused. No, uh, especially if there are only a few um, that control the economy. No, then that that, that becomes fodder for <laughs> for a lot of these. Uh, deal make behind the scenes deal making between uh, you know i mean there, there's a whole strand of um economics called political economy it's basically the dynamics of power and wealth right? and you, you realize especially in in countries with weak political systems or weak 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 uh, uh state no? uh, state apparatus uh, th there's that sort of collusion no? uh, of of the the elites, no, the moneyed elites and power. No? So that's what uh, Chikyamko was referring to. I don't know, Joaquin, um, did you want to to to, to um, speak more on that? Yeah, because yeah, the the way you've described it, I don't think you're necessarily disagreeing. But you're right, no. Um, I think you are a realist in the sense that the reality is one. Each time there's capitalism, it's hard to avoid <laughs> collusion and crony capitalism. So yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Joaquin. I keep interrupt, interrupting you. Uh, yes, sir. basically that. Point. It's just that um, you know, I just disagree with the article with how it seemed to separate how we see capitalism in real life to the idealized form of capitalism yeah. where there's no yeah. corruption. It's all just market competition. Yeah. Like I think that cannot be separated. But yeah. That's a good point because there will always be. You know, I mean, you look at the US, you look at even the, the successful European and Nordic ones, South Korea, for example. You know, there's always in corruption. They've they've jailed you know, the, their president you know, for for that. You know, in cahoots with uh, the conglomerates. You know. So you're right. You know, even for developed countries, you no, know, it's ideal to think that capitalism cannot 
can can exist no like just being a force for good but of course it can be minimized thanks for that very helpful very useful points anyone else Anyone? So yeah, just one more person. Just just your thoughts. Sir, uh, go ahead, see Meg. Yes. Can I be heard clearly, please? I'm on Zoom, Papa Sir. Can I be heard clearly? Sorry? Can I be heard clearly? Yeah, it, it's a bit uh, muffled a bit and not too loud. Pero sige, go ahead. Okay, how about this one? Yeah, that, that, that works. Okay. okay. Um, for me, like, at least my takeaway from the article is not really to judge capitalism versus other systems, but it's more of just like a resign. And this is like the tools we have. Like, whether change will come or not, that will be more effective, that will be welcome. But I think it's really just like accepting, okay, this is the options we have, this is the systems we have, how can we maximize it at the moment we have right now? Like that's my key takeaway from it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a good point as well. Um, it's, you're right, it's one of the tools that we have. But again, it's, it's how to actually use it, leverage it well. Thank you for that. Anyone else before we move on? So I like the comments though, because they're both good and not just you know agreeing with the article, but also trying to temper expectations though, with capitalism. Though. Again, and, and I like I'd like to um, and, and this is the part I really like the most. Though. Um Yes, there are abuses, no. Um, and then again, the, the the main thing here, and Joaquin is right, no. It's hard to to avoid these things, no. But you know, there is also, I mean, some countries have shown, no, through rulemaking, etc., formal and informal rules, no. Um, it's still capitalism in a sense, no. I mean, we're not turning our backs on capitalism, no. The thing to 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 note here is. How do you make sure that capitalism can be a force for good? So is greed good? Yes, greed meaning you know profit-driven objectives. Yes, if it can be channeled in the right direction and if there's a level playing field. That's why you know it, it's not a call to unbridled capitalism. No? Um, you should have rules. No? Remember when we talked about in module three social democracy. No? Um, again. I like it because it's still democratic and capitalist. But yes, government should try to create the rules. But Joaquin is also right, especially for weak states. Now, sometimes it's the greedy corporations that pay good money so that they sort of they become ghostwriters of the laws. No? So they benefit from, <laughs> from corrupt politicians. That can happen. No? But to the, to the extent possible, you can just make it more competitive. Um, uh, try to really unleash, you know, and, and and have have policies that that that, that you know um, you can put in place, you know, to to safeguard against abuses. You know? And I mean, granted, the Philippines, you know, there's still a huge degree of um, uh, what they call collusion between the powers that be. They say, I think. Only 40 companies, 40 families actually own majority, the bulk of economic activity in the Philippines. And most of them, they have power really to dictate on Congress and even in the different agencies. Uh, but you know, I mean, to be fair, you know, the Philippines has made some progress. You know? um, 2015, after two decades, they signed the Philippine Competition Act. Uh, the first antitrust act no, in the country ever, no? and they've been running after no, um, and, uh, potential collusion. No? Um, so, yun. so there are some successes, no? although gradual, parent. because again, there's that reality check. Um, there's that uh, power and wealth dynamics no, between politicians and conglomerates. But 
the basic premise here is it can be a force for good uh, if directed well and if you have safeguards against abuses. All right, so again, let's continue. So what's the concept of shared value? Now? So shared value is a, a concept, I think that was popularized by Michael Porter and, and his uh, colleague, now I forget the name, um, a decade ago or so. Because he wanted to differentiate between um, shareholder value and shared value. Because in the traditional sense, if you summarize what shared value is, it's very simple. You know, you mga academics and even um, business people, they like coming up with fancy jargons, fancy terms. So shared value is one of them. Para medyo kakaiba, unique. No? Uh, even SSE. No? Uh, so the, the, the development world will come up with so many jargons. But if you really summarize it, no? and I stole from his TED talk, no? he summarized it himself. No? It's addressing a social issue with a business model. Why is it shared value? Because before, for a corporation, for a business, it's all about economic value. No? For a corporation, it's profit maximization. You earn um, the greatest profit that you can no? um, for your shareholders, for the company and for its shareholders. Kaya sa shared value, when you're now trying to solve a social issue, the value goes beyond the shareholders. It's shared now with a wider set of stakeholders, no? the community around you. No? So there's economic value and you're also trying to maximize or somehow help address social challenges, no? provide social value. Kaya shared value siya. It's no longer just the economic value for the stakeholders, for the corporation, but it's, 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 it's sharing sharing the, the gains no, to a wider audience no, outside and beyond. Diba? Parang ano yan, you're sharing with your neighbor. Diba? So it's, some, it's not just um, sharing within the family, but it's really going beyond, going outside. You're sharing uh, the benefits no, to a wider audience. The key here really is business model. So this is the idea in brief. No? So again, it's, 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 mamaya, sige, mamaya ako na i-distinguish between CSR and CSB. No? But again, shared value is, you're still not, it's not philanthropic in the sense that, oh, I'm a company and I will now sort of try to distinguish between CSR. No? The old model kasi was, oh, I am, uh, I'm SM or I'm Jollibee. Oh, now I will uh, donate money. Uh, I will uh, build the school building. Uh, I'll put my stamp around it, my brand around the, the classroom or the, the school. No? Ayun na yun, tapos na. The concept of shared values, no, it's, it's, it's combining the profit motive. No? Um, let me check. Lang. Refining the profit, uh, combining the profit motive no? with addressing development challenges. No? So, and I have examples later no, to, to further um, clarify no, what I mean. But if I don't articulate it well, no, again, you have your, your Canvas course no, as, as your reference. No. So there are three ways, no, and this will become clearer once we sort of try to, to dig deeper no, into the three main pathways by which companies can create um, shared value. Uh, three things no? by reconceiving products and markets, by redefining productivity in the value chain, and by enabling local cluster development. So yeah, all right, we'll we'll we'll, we'll discuss each. No, but again, the basic thing is it's addressing a social issue with a business model. Remember, business model. So it's not just giving out money, not the dole out. It's giving something but using your profit uh, operations. So ito, for example, I'm reconceiving products and markets. Uh, the, the classic example, and there's an Indian economist that came out with the phrase, there's fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. 
So it's not just necessarily doing good, no? But it's, you, again, many have shown that you can combine profit and doing good. So for example, ito, of course, there are unintended consequences like pollution uh, or ocean plastics. No? So the sachet economy. Actually, the sachet economy became popular in the Philippines because it helps the, the poor people no, manage their cash flows. Yun nga, I was, I, yung, I, my wife, I, I found this out from my wife. No? Sabi niya, even, um, even yung hair dye, I didn't know before, no? meron ng sachet. <laughs> uh, kasi my, my wife grew up in a not so well-off neighborhood. No? Um, yun, even, even hair dye daw may sachet. So it's basically trying to to, may meron na shampoo, merong may sabon, etc., etc. In a sense, that's that's you know by reconceiving products and markets. Because dante, companies were targeting the affluent crowd, no? Sige, because they think these people have more money to buy. Pero hindi actually the poor will have their basic needs. So you meet them halfway, sort of, di ba? Parang ay no, there is fortune when you target the poor, because volume yun, no. So sachet economy, PNG, Unilever, they're, 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 they're making tons of money. No? Of course, yung downside lang nito is um, yung, yung ocean plastics. No? Another good example would be uh, cell phone. Dati medyo, ano, diba? medyo upscale yung dating ng cell phone, etc. But now, they learn that no? there's fortune if you, you sachet size or if you sort of really um, come up with very, very affordable promos. No? Cell phone, no? magpa-load ka ng 10 pesos or 20 pesos, you'll get how many minutes free. Only this, only that. No? So it's it's actually not just, well, they are also uh, helping solve development challenges, no? making the poor access basic needs, no? but they are also making money. So pwede, you can actually combine. You can actually combine profit motives and at the same time, solve societal needs. But again, there may be some, what do you call this? There may be some unintended consequences like yung sa mga sachet economy. So it's reconceiving the products no? tsaka yung market mo. Kasi dati target market mo yung ano. Pero hindi. By, by, by satisfying the, the needs, no? the basic needs of the poor, for example, no? you can make money as well. For your, so yun yung norm ngayon. Catering, so segmented na to, no? In marketing, they call that market segmentation. So there's also money to be made. So it's some, it's more or less a win-win also. Diba? Kasi, you know, the poor uh, can manage their cash flow, patingi-tingi, but at the same time, there's money to be made as well. Uh, kayo naman, maybe think of examples of reconceiving products and market. Can you guys come up with an example. No examples. <clears throat> Example lang that you're selling to the poor or the marginalized or a an underserved market with products. That will suit their needs, and you're making money out of it. All right, chat. All right. Clean water. Uh, can you can you further elaborate what you meant by clean water? Like, you know, like Manila than Manila water. In a sense, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're making it cheaper, more efficient, and then you're making money out of it, that's a, that's a, that's a social need. You're absolutely correct. No? So uh, especially if you're able to, to, to lower the cost or make the costs more manageable. Um, yeah, definitely. Because that's one of the SDGs. Diba? Clean water. No? If you're able to make money at, this, at the same time, kasi ito, that's a very good point. No? And again, goes back to the point of uh, 
Uh, bottled water, so yes. Pero clean water, for example, yung, yung water uh, provision lang, let's say Manila din, Manila water, before they were privatized, no? government was so inefficient. Now, the, the access to water is much, much better. No? The, 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 per, the percentage of people who, or families who have access to, to, to what we call potable or safe water no? through Manila, Manila and Manila, no? grew by leaps and bounds. No? So they're making tons of money. No? The Lopez's, the Ayala's, obviously. No? But they're also serving a societal need. But of course, some would argue, is it enough? No? That's up for debate. Bottled water, um, yes, especially, I will caveat that, no? I mean, the problem with bottled water is, just like the sachet economy, no? by solving an, one thing, you may end up causing another set of issues. No? Yung, yung, ano. So may, un, may, may, may angle din of unintended consequences. Maybe uh, it Refilling station, siguro. No? Okay, yon. Especially if it's a far flung area and wala na. Like, I, uh, we have a project, no? A fifth class municipality in Benguet. They don't have access to water. So, na uso yung mga refilling stations, no? Or water service delivery. Yun pwede pa. Pero bottled water, yes and no, no? If it's trying to solve access to water issues, no? Especially for a community that doesn't have ready access, no? Oh, okay, yon. Pero kung bottled water, not necessarily. Uh, it could actually uh, cause pollution. Pa. So yes, it, it depends on the context also. But you're right. In all of these cases, they're making money, but they're trying to solve societal issues like clean water or electricity for that matter. All right. Sige, any other examples before we move? Asige, second naman, no? redefining productivity in the value chain. So one is shared values. You make money this, by catering to an underserved segment or trying to widen access to an underserved segment. So that can be telecoms, water, electricity, uh, managing their cash flows by parceling out or uh, coming up with, with smaller, uh, uh, more affordable uh, segments no, or, or, or categories or, 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 or items. Ito, this one naman, you can target the value chain. Remember, we discussed the value chain diba? or the supply chain. Uh, so for example, ito, let's say supply chain naman. No? Um, in the States, no, Amazon, for example, no? um, Amazon before, no, kakapal ng box, no? then they decided, oh, sige, we'll try to... Um, one will use recycled material. Second, will use less paper. So, hindi lang do good yun. They're actually uh, shaving on costs. Diba? What are the two ways of maximizing profit? Maximize sales or minimize costs or both. So, ito, they're minimizing costs. So, they're generating more money. But at the same time, they're solving pollution. Diba? So suppliers, logistics, etc. Win-win no? um, diba? um, Ito, for example, uh, I think Auro, um, that's in the discussion board. No? One of the, in ano yun, module, early part of module 4. Pa, no? It's, ito, um, and we're working right now, they, we're working with a company called Kenimer. They actually, they're a sort of a trader. No? They source cacao from different parts of Asia. They sell that to Mars. No? Mars yung nagpo-produce for M&Ms. Alam nyo naman yan. So, um, what they're doing is they're actually uh, gathering farmers, uh, helping farmers move to high-value crops, training them how to cultivate, properly cultivate cacao beans. No? And they're buying, they're guaranteed buyback no, of the cacao beans and Kenimer makes money because they sell to Mars. But they also, in a sense, that's the value chain, by right? explain natin. But they're also helping the farmers no, realize greater incomes and more know-how. Pero hindi lang yung do good. It combines both. There's profit to be made. They, 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 they sustain their uh, supply. No? They make sure that their supply is 
constant. Um, so they make money by selling to Mars, no, by having adequate supply. But at the same time, they're sustainably helping farmers. No? So yeah, that's another way of, uh, that's another example. And on the far end of the supply chain or the value chain, it's the distribution side. Ginagawa natin ng Pepsi before, ng uh, Coke. No? Um, you sell my product, I'll give you a fridge. Or I'll, yeah, alam nyo naman yung mga karinderia or, or sari-sari store na signboards. No? We'll, we'll, we'll give you money or we will make the signboards for you. No? Pero uh, you sell our products no? or we'll give you a fridge. So that helps them sell their products. And at the same time, it helps improves the the micro and small enterprises uh, gives them what they need also for their for their business no? or gives them additional uh, uh, capital no? or lends to them. Um, in exchange, uh, they will uh, sell the products. No? So Pepsi Coke, especially Coke, for example, no? Coke partnered with us no? in a project that no? they were handing out, they were training Sari Sari stores no? during the pandemic on safe COVID practices, providing mga uh, additional barriers, mga acrylic, etc. No? So that, you know, Coke will continue to sell. And it also helps the SMEs. So there's that profit, quote unquote, greed motive, but there's also that, uh, that uh, intention of helping out as well. So kayo naman. In terms of the value chain approach, can you give other examples? In the value chain, how a company can do share a shared value approach. Uh, sige, uh, there's one chat. I read online that Walmart reduced packaging, yeah, improving delivery logistics, but the quantities be exactly. So, you know, exactly. So, um, improving delivery logistics, no, that helps uh, reduce pollution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the same time, that's 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 good, no, that 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 decreases the the shipping costs or logistics costs of companies. At the same time, they can ship more. Yeah, so Walmart, for example. Another thing no, that's closer to you guys no, is if you go to UP Town, no, uh, there's this uh, uh, shop called Rags, Rags to Riches. No? So, you know, by the chain, you know, kasi, diba, they, they make something out of discarded stuff. You know, the, the mga, either retaso or yung mga, uh, mga loose uh, materials, they turn it into bags. So yon. So they're also ma they're making money. That's what you call a social enterprise. No? But at the same time, uh, they're addressing different things. So they're addressing pollution. They're helping out. Uh, they're helping families earn income. No? but they also are generating profit. Uh, not too much. No, but sakto lang. No? So that's another good example. So you can. You can. No? The caveat here is. Sometimes the intention to help out is not direct or not explicit, no? but in a sense, they also do it anyway, even if they did not intend it to be. No? Your social enterprises, they're quite different no? because the, the, they really intentionally decide to, uh, to help to, to address uh, development or social challenges. Using a profit, uh, op, a profit uh, based operation. Yung iba kasi parang unintended or not unintended pero hindi yun yung unang intention. But again, it's still a win win if you think about it. So ito, no, I, 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 I saw this during the pandemic, no, 2020. No? But oh, this is pretty cool. No? Uh, San Miguel is actually gathering plastic wastes no? that solves pollution, especially ocean plastic waste. No? They're actually, I didn't know they, you can do this. No? Uh, 
they're converting it to fuel. No? So San Miguel is not collecting your trash <laughs> or your plastic uh, just because they want to do good. No? Maybe that's part of it, but also it's a win-win, diba? They're 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 especially now, no, <laughs> with the Ukraine crisis, grabby yung uh, fuel costs now. No? What they're doing now is uh, more relevant for them. No? So they're saving on costs, which can further maximize profit. No? At the same time, they're addressing a societal need, which is plastics pollution, because it's becoming a a a, a, a more uh, a bigger problem these days. No? Yung ocean, yung ocean plastics. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I just saw it, so I, I wanted to share it as well. Ito, for example, no, yung vaccines, no, and I discussed this before. No? Uh, kalimutan nyo na yung uh, Sputnik, for example, no, because that's the only government um, government uh, sponsored or government made uh, vaccine. Everything else is made by the private sector. No? Do you think Pfizer, BioNTech um, were just in it to do good? No, it's both. They want to do good and at the same time, they want to make money. Pfizer, BioNTech, um, Moderna, they're making a killing. They're making tons of money, but they're helping solve uh, a societal need. And here, no, here it this actually, the, the thing with, uh, with vaccines, no? This actually is a good example of how governments can incentivize or can help the private sector. What happened was, diba Pfizer was the first vaccine, no? uh, first certified vaccine. The government, U.S. government, no, I mean, under the Trump administration, but no? they provided, parang kinon test nila, no? oh. We have this Operation Warp Speed. No, we'll give money to whoever will come up with the uh, best uh, proof of concept, etc., etc. No, no. So they incentivize the private sector, and the private sector responded. So this is a good, again, example of how governments can actually incentivize or set rules or 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 incentives, carrots, no, so that the private sector can respond appropriately. So they're making money and they're they're helping solve uh, societal needs and challenges. So tinanyo sa Philippines were I think more or less over the hump because we have access to all of these vaccines, no? And for the most part, except Sputnik, all of them were made by the private sector. So the private sector can be a force for good. All right, there's a third one. Um, I thought this one I will have to I have a separate slide for this one. enabling local cluster development alright so let me define first or discuss first what a cluster is so a cluster is uh, examples lang to, no? there's, a, there's the, at least before no? Marikina had a shoe cluster in Zamboanga City, they have a sardine cluster. No, 10 out of the 11 sardine canning uh, companies are in Zamboanga. Dried mangoes in Cebu, dried fish in Guitars, uh, bananas in Davao, lechon in the Loma, bulalo in Tagaytay, etc. Cluster, yeah. So it's basically a geographic area where uh, that, that, that area sort of specializes in one product or a series of products. Sorry kung nagugutom kayo because of my example. So ito, just to illustrate what happens in a cluster. Uh, this is from a World Bank publication uh, that I was a part of uh, more than a decade ago, I think. Um, this was in Brazil, no footwear cluster. Let's say uh, for for lack of a shortcut na lang. Sabi natin, for example, Havaianas no? or shoes, no? Brazilian kasi. So you have, for example, Marikina. Marikina na lang, no? This replaced Cariri, which is a region in, in, in uh, Brazil, no? with Marikina. So in Marikina, before at least, nung uso pa, no? it's not just 
And the cluster is an entire industry supported by sub-industries. So you have shoes, so the lead products. So you have um, shoes, no? leather shoes, plastic footwear manufacturers, no? and then you have the buyers and retailers. But supporting that, you have a lot of other industries. No? You have uh, companies that supply the, the material, the chemical products, the ornaments, the, the leather itself. Uh, and then some materials, no? And then you have equipment suppliers, no? Component suppliers, equipment suppliers, so sewing machines, pressing machines, uh, plastic injectors and whatnot, molders, no? I didn't even know, no? And then you have other um, ancillary industries, no? Packing companies, printing, textiles, etc. And, you know, logistics, marketing. So, it's an entire a cluster. Yes, they specialize in that. No, but it's not only. Um, kaya nga, no, DTI was really at least a few years ago. No, we're really promoting this concept of a cluster. Because you're generating a lot of economic activity. It's not just the shoes. No, it's also you're creating and incentivizing the creation of sub industries that will feed, that will support that lead cluster. No, yung shoes, for example. So imagine the number of companies there are supporting that. No? And then you have uh, people, the number of employment you can generate. So that's a cluster. No? It's, it's, it's a basically a, an area, geographic area. Silicon Valley, for example, where they specialize in, in uh, one, one particular uh, good or service. No? Pwedeng call center kasi service. But they're supported. You know, and it creates uh, industries and sub-industries. And you generate economic activity and jobs. So one thing that you can also do, you know, uh, the third main pathway uh, discussed by Michael Porter and team you know, is enabling local cluster development. There's two debate, conceiving products and markets, redefining productive intervention. The last is enabling. You can facilitate this. In a nutshell, that's what Porter is saying. But of course, the caveat there is you, you need to be a big company to do that. You need a lot of resources. You guys are familiar with Nespresso, diba? I mean, my brother-in-law has that. No? So medyo mahal lang. I find the capsules a bit expensive kasi 30 plus. No? Uh, of course, it's, it, it's cheaper than going to Starbucks or coffee places. So what Nestle did, no, because they want they have a business, Nespresso, diba? And they need an entire this. <laughs> they need an entire support, a set of support industries and some industries to support that enterprise to come up with that capsule or capsules and the machine. So what Nestle did, no, no I need this, no. So what will I do? Okay. Nestle kasi owns it. So I will build, no, in this area, I will build uh, agriculture, technical, I will build the cap capabilities. No? I will support production. No? So all the way, the value chain approach again, no? I will uh, work with farmers, train them so that I have the, the products themselves. I will provide inputs, fertilizers, etc. No, I will help cooperatives. I will provide them financing, etc. No, I will support financial institutions around them, um, and then I will uh, also incentivize logistical firms, etc., etc. I will also partner with certificate certifying bodies um, so that a production is sustainable, etc., etc. So it's basically trying to incentivize, or if it's missing, no, you come up with a company or you you fund you finance operations of companies that want to invest so it's attracting companies no in the different sub industries to support that production so it's basically seeing where the gaps are in terms of this cluster and filling the gaps so that's what nestle did for nespresso because nespresso diba, what goes behind the the machines and the, the cup, the, the aluminum cups, a lot of inputs, the coffee, etc. And yeah, may component suppliers, equipment suppliers, other supplies, 
service providers. So you identify if you're a big company like Nestle, oh, kulang pa to. So how can you incentivize that? So that's what they did. But ito, again, the caveat here is you can only do this if you have really a lot of uh, resources. So this isn't terribly relevant for you guys, especially if you're if you're planning to set up your own small or medium business. No? But if you're planning to go corporate, puede. No? You can really help out. No? You can boost economic activity and benefit different kinds of stakeholders, so the poor, etc., etc., by doing this. Okay. The next thing really I wanted to talk about is just to distinguish between CSR and CSB. I sort of talked about this already earlier. CSR kasi again, the old modality, no? uh, and also before, no? before, I, 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 before I was converted into this, this, this capitalism can be a force for good thinking. No? Before, no, I, ang iniisip pa lang talaga, okay, business, if you want to do good, oh, mag-donate ka na lang. So that's the old model. No? So you, kami ng misis ko, we watch uh, GMA News no? in the evening. So each each segment meron silang Kapuso Foundation. So you have, let's say, Ayala Foundation, not Ayala, no? but, but uh, Jollibee Foundation, etc. The old style was, oh, sige, um, we'll, we'll donate things. So again, pwedeng classroom, pwedeng computer equipment no pero ang ang kapalit oh, we'll have our logos there no? so sometimes medyo ano ka eh? is it really providing philanthropy or it's also marketing or both could be both the problem kasi with the problem with CSR is once you donate money diba? go back to our favorite cartoon no? that's it dole out yun eh that's the dole out mentality i'm not saying it's bad it's good. Okay naman siya. But the problem is, it's not sustainable. And I hate to criticize. It's not a criticism, but it is the inherent weakness, let's say, of community pantries. The problem with community pantries, it's it's this one. Eh. Um, yes, it's good. No, but ang galing. Si Patricia noon, very laudable work. But nakita nyo, after a while, it tapered off. No? The problem with philanthropy uh, is... Sa simula, pwedeng okay, but eventually, and it's not to criticize, it's just that the reality check, the reality is, that's the weakness. If it, we're just basing it, doing good on philanthropy, mauubos. It's not sustainable because it's a, it's a totally separate uh, operation from profit maximization. Impact is limited. Diba? So yun, kasi nga, yun nga. Papagawa ka ng school building, that's it. The, with shared value, CSB, creating shared value. Um, it's, it's part of the profit-oriented business. Diba? Once you keep, it's more sustainable kasi if I keep making profit while I'm solving this, no, so continue lang. I can continue doing that. Diba? It becomes a sustainable operation. Whereas ito, once I'm ano, tapos na. Ito hindi, I can keep doing it. No? So, oh, yung clean water, for example, yung uh, I, I, Kenimer, yung sinabi ko, or Auro, no? uh, the first part, the first discussion board in module 4. No? I can continue helping farmers no? because I will need their supply. So, ano lang yun, virtuous cycle. No? Whereas, whereas if I just gave, let's say, 100,000 pesos to this cooperative of farmers, that's it. Tapos na, I can't keep on giving 100,000 pesos lang to cooperatives. Mabubusan ako ng pera din. But if I find a way um, to help them while I'm making money by helping them, then it becomes sustainable. That's the big difference and that's why now we're going with this. No? The new, no, in fairness, no, Jollibee Foundation, for example, Ayala Foundation, they've now been evolving to more of this. The shared value type, whether that's supporting social enterprises, etc., etc. Mas dito na sila. Kasi, for example, in Jollibee Foundation, they're now partnering with farmers um, to supply their restaurants. So they're making money, 
At the same time, they're continuing to source their produce from farmers. So win-win. Diba? So it's, it doesn't stop with donating money. Lang. Hindi. It's part of that uh, profit operation. Uh, so pwede mag-continue. So again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the community panties are bad. Or philanthropy is bad. Especially during uh, crisis, no? pandemic, kaya nga nagkaroon ng community pantry. Pandemics, there's a role for philanthropy. No? Bagyo, obviously you donate money, di ba? Kasi relief yun. Pero if you want long-term, more sustainable uh, uh, manner or approach to solving things, then it's it's the profit mode it's it's the operations it's the enterprise it's it's it, it has to be inter enterprise driven because relying on dole out philanthropy uh, it might be good the intention might be good but eventually the resources will get depleted so mas maganda may market model may capitalist model may business model. I also included on Canvas no, um, the former number two, uh, Deputy, uh, or Deputy Secretary General, si Mark Malak Brown. No? He convened a group no, uh, and they have this better business, better world. No? So they come out with some nice examples of um, market opportunities. No? Industries where you can make money pero you're 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 trying to solve development challenges no? so affordable housing for example no there's a group called 8990 no yun that's a classic example you're you're trying to solve the need for shelter affordable shelter but you're making money so ito, you can browse that no? in your own free time no uh, public transport you know mga uh, ayan, affordable housing uh, low income food markets no focusing on on, on low incomes uh, affordable healthcare no etc etc so tgp for example or right med no of course there are competition issues no cheaper medicines generics yes that's solving uh, uh, a need no a health need but they're they're making money so there are industries where you can no um, kaya nga, I wanted to share these things with you kasi especially for those of you who are going to the corporate world. No? Yes, sometimes capitalism uh, can, 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 can have abuses, no? uh, but it can be a force for good. And the good thing with capitalism, it has the resources, financial, technical, etc., etc., to be a force for good. And you can combine both the profit motive and addressing societal challenges. Last slide, um, discussion board. No? So again, I wanted you guys to provide a CSV, no? creating shared value example in that discussion board. I again do not, and I will really be strict here no? I, because I discussed the difference. Do not provide a CSR example. Wag dole out, wag philanthropy. Give me another example where you're solving a societal need, but you're using a business model for it. So yon, I want you also to to summarize what they are, and and then what's the main pathway towards shared value? Is it the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid, reconceiving products and markets? Is it the value chain approach or enabling local cluster development? And lastly, no, please connect it also to the PDP overall framework that it's aligned. Remember, we 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 started module four with the PDP, no, the high level outcomes, etc. So for next week, since we're not doing the group consultations yet, no, we'll start module five, no. But what I'll do is. I'll come up with an exercise um, where we can sort of practice module five, but using the concepts of shared value. We'll do that. We'll do that next week. Starting next week. If you don't finish, we'll continue the following week.
I'm not sure if I can still give a lecture on May 10. I'll check. Meron pa yata tayo one more lecture. All right. Any questions, guys? That ends the lecture tonight. I mean, th this, this, the last part of module four is really short. Any questions? About anything, even the announcements. Okay, we're good. I think we're good. All right, or maybe some of you are sleeping or watching the game. <laughs> Could I clarify, lang po? When is the deadline for answering the, yung survey po nung alternative dates for the Edelfitir? Uh, let's try this week. This week, but okay, but I'll tell you. This week, uh, please answer this week. If you can answer it like now, para you don't forget. Yes, sir. After this class, much better, di ba? That's it for me, but. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a good evening, no, and have a good rest of the week. Bye, bye. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.